Hello guys, in this video we are going to see how to create, manage and deploy applications via SCCM server. SCCM is a tool provided by Microsoft. SCCM means a System Center Configuration Management or also known as Windows Endpoint Management System. The SCCM is used in a large organization when we have, when we have thousands of computers and we need to install software, operating system and patches and doing these hectic works manually will take will consume a lot of time and uh, organization is not ready to provide this time. So Microsoft provided a solution called SCCM server. The SCCM server can be installed in, in an active directory domain controller and then all the computers connected to the AD will propagate these policies and then these policies will be applied. The policies or the software patches, everything will be applied to this. In this video, we are not going to cover how to create a domain controller or a DNS server or how to install the SCCM server. We are going just going to cover how to deploy an application to this SCCM. If you are working in an organization, you might have noticed an application in your computer called Software Center. In the Software Center application, you will have multiple applications like your uh, archiver or the notepad or the VPN apps. You will find these applications in the Software Center. So, how this software center have these applications inside that? It is because these softwares are loaded in the SCCM server and then published or deployed to the SCCM clients and the, your system is in Active Directory. So these rules are fetched from these SCCM servers and these applications are all, also fetched from the SCCM server. So you, of course, you need a forest or the Active Directories. Uh, your system should be in your Active Directory. So again, as I said, I'm not going to cover how to create a domain controller. I'm going to jump right away to how to deploy an application. So now I'll quickly show my configuration. So this is my ADS. I've installed four roles here. The first one is the ADS role, the DHCP role, the DNS, DNS role, and the IIS role. The IIS is optional here. You can uh, ignore if you want, but this ADS, DHCP, and DNS is a required one. In this ADDS, this is the domain server. Once you install this role, you need to promote your server as a domain controller. You need to create a forest. So I've already done these settings. You can uh, refer online to how to uh, configure the ADDS. So once the ADDS is configured in this VM, I created another VM. And then in that VM, I created SCCM server. So this is another VM. Uh, both of the VMs are running in uh, Windows Server 2022. So in this, I have installed IIS, WDS, and WSUS. Once, uh, once you install all these three roles, you can install the uh, SQL Server 2017 and then Endpoint Configuration Management tool. So this is the Windows Endpoint Configuration Manager, so also known as the SCCM. So once you install this SCCM, um, you will see devices. In the devices, you will have all the uh, devices you have you can create a collections if you want for for our example we are not going to create uh, devices or uh, the other systems i'll just quickly show my operating systems how i created uh, i downloaded the iso of windows 10 enterprises and then i created an operating system image and then i created a boot image and at some task sequence um, you can refer online document to Microsoft provided an excellent document for this. So once this is done, you will create a new client, Windows 10 client using this. And then we, are, we have the software center in the client, it will be automatically installed. You don't need to worry about that. So this is for the client. Let's come back to the server. So um, this is the configuration manager console. This console switch to software library and then select application management and click applications so in this in this section we'll load all the applications required so the clients will fetch the applications from here so i'm going to install an application today called 7zip right click on this application and click create application it will show this pop-up so there are multiple types in the in here it's like msi file or the apk file or you can install the exe file or something so for this example, I'm just going to do the Windows installer MSI file. MSI file have a, a pros when you use it. I'll just uh, show say that in the next section. Um, so we need the file. 
So I went to 7-Zip website and downloaded the MSI version of the 7-Zip one and then I pasted in my network path location. So this is my network path and then I have this software here. This is a MSI file and I click open and I click next import yes. So this will import the application and then you'll see the summary. I'll just quickly edit this summary, edit this application. So these are the details you can see in the client machine. So if you can see here, this is the installation program. This is a command to install this application. So I haven't typed this, this is populated automatically. So this is the pros when you are using the MSI version. The command, the installation command will be populated automatically. When you are using the other versions like EXE or the APKs, the command might not be pro, uh, populated automatically. You might need to Google it and uh, you know, you know we, we might need to add it here. So I'll just um, change this installation behavior. I can choose the installation only for the user or for the system. In case if I in a system, if I have two users or more, then I can choose to which user I need to install. So in my case, I need to install the whole system. So it doesn't, it is, it is not a user specific. And then I'll click next. So this is my summary again and I'll click next. Now this will create the application and then you will see uh, the application here in a couple of minutes. Yeah, it's done now. I'll click close. You see here, you can see that status is active, but it is not deployed yet. And just, we have to deploy this first. I'll just right click and go to deploy. So this is the deployment wizard. So I have to select a collection here. I'll click on browse. So I will select all users and user groups. It's fine, click next. So this is the distribution point we selected. Then I'll click next you have two options here action one is installed action two is uninstalled so if you want this action if you uh, if you select this install that means he can install the client can install this application or if you select this uninstall the client can uninstall this application so i'll just click install one so you have uh, two purposes one is available and one is required available in the sense it is an optional software it, the user or the client can select if he wants to use this software or not but when you select required this is a required application the SCCM server will push this application to the server so I'll, uh, there is an option required administrator approval if the user requests the application in some cases if if the software is a paid software or the licensing software or if some in some cases if you want uh, a firewall or a rule the user have to request for this application and for some reason the administrator have to approve before the installation you can use this option as of now for our example i'm not going to use this I'm just click next and i'm not going to schedule this next and just go to select this and next not going to set any alerts now so i'll click next if you want you can still select these alerts i'm not i'll go i'll skip this click next so give it a couple of seconds this will start the deployment once this is deployed you will see this deployment status as one see yeah it is done so you'll see the deployments is one and the status active let's just go to the deployment types and quickly check this so there are a couple of things which i need to show you in this deployment types um, right click properties so you can see the dependencies the dependencies it says no that means it don't have any dependencies i'll show you that i'll come to that part again so so in the general you'll see the this is the installation media we gave 
and then i'll go to the next tab it's content so just check whether this is your uh share path location and then i'll go to the programs so here you will see the command for installation and the command for uninstallation and the provision to provide a command to repair your program so as of now we have this installation program that means the, uh, when the client clicks install button this command will run and it will install this application or when client uninstalls this application they uninstall this command will run and it will uninstall this application so this part this middle part is called product code i'll come to this part again and in some applications it will provide you a uh, way to repair if there is any problem so for this example we don't have the repair command we just will skip this so in case if you want to run this 64 bit application in 32 bit processor you can select this but this is not a recommended option and uh, not all software support this i'll go to the detections method so this is very important one previous in previous builds of seccm this was not there in the initial build so uh, when your uh, software is already installed in the client machine and when you run this seccm the report shows there are some failures in some of the systems when you analyze the failures the in, the application is already installed in the system that is why it is showing it as failure so microsoft added this feature called detection method it first checks whether the application is installed or not if it is installed it will not show the error message it will not try to reinstall it it will simply say success the application is deployed so there is there is a way to check that there are three ways actually and I, I this is automatically populated i'll just click on this edit clause and i'll quickly show you so there are three setting types one is the file system check the file system if this application is already there or check the re windows registry editor if there is a registry uh, for this application or the windows installer the windows installer will have a unique product code if you remember in the previous step i have said the product code this product code means it refers to the seven zip application so this product code is unique for that and if this product code is found in your system that means the application is already installed so this is the detection method windows added recently so i'll just uh, if you if you want to add more classes you can add over here you can click and select i'll select the windows installer and select the product code if you want so i'm not going to add anything now i'll just uh, leave it as it is and then i'll go to the return codes so these are the codes it returns when the uh, application deployment is completed when it returns value 0 and or 1707 that means the application deployment is successful or if it returns some other codes like this this is the mapped values to that and i'll come to the last tab which is the important one this is a software dependency step in some cases an application might have some transitive dependencies transitive depend dependencies are in some cases uh, the application requires another application to be installed before installing this application for example when you install a sql server you need um, .NET framework 4.5 or above so the .NET framework 4.5 is an application which is a transitive dependency to the sql server so in this case we don't have any transitive dependencies the 7 zip can run standalone in case if you have a transitive dependency you can click add here and then you can add your trans your dependencies here so it, it will add your uh, application it will install these applications first before installing your seven zip so i'm not going to add any transitive dependencies i'll click ok so this deployment status says active and it is deployed that means the the application is currently deployed in the server i will just scroll down and show you it says targeted the targeted means it is available in the server the client have to communicate with the server and then fetch these values so every every uh, every 60 minutes the client will contact the server and fetch the new rules and the policies from the server if the client is not contacting the console every time the console can push the changes to the client if the client is disconnected from the console it will not contact this uh, application so once you are in the ad this will be already configured and it will be communicating constantly and this this application will be automatically fetched by the client you don't need to do anything so for this we have completed our deployment you will see in your software center you will see an 
application called software center in your system in the software center search for the seven zip and you will see these applications to install so you will see a button to install it once you install that button changes to uninstall the when you click the install button if you remember the command it is automatically populated that will run and install this application in your system and when you click the uninstall button that will uninstall the application from your system so that's it guys that's it for today's video that this is how we do the application deployment in SCCM. thanks for watching my video bye